Hello everyone, this is Mr. Couple. This is Fizzer number 10, Weighing the Earth, from the Gravitation chapter, page number 4. In today's Fizzer, we're going to calculate the mass of the Earth. So in other words, we're going to weigh the Earth. Normally, when you wish to weigh an object, you can just place that object on a scale. But we can't put the planet on a scale. So how could we possibly know the mass of the Earth? It turns out that we can use Newton's law of universal gravitation, which we derived in class, to weigh the Earth. So here's Newton's law of universal gravitation. The force of gravity is equal to g m m over r squared. We can use this law of gravity to calculate the mass of the Earth. All we have to do is apply this equation to the Earth. Now when we apply this equation to the Earth, these variables take on a very special meaning. So let's first make sure we understand what that meaning is. So to begin with, the first mass is the mass of the Earth. And that's what we want to calculate. So see, the universal gravitation has within it what we're trying to find, the mass of the Earth. So we can definitely use this to find the mass of the Earth. It just means that if that's going to be our unknown, then everything else must be known. The next variable is the little m, or the second mass. And so what is that going to be? Well, we have to pick a mass. So let's just pick some mass. So how about this standard one kilogram mass? So now the little m, or the second mass, is simply the mass of this object. So this is some object that we have at the surface of the Earth. We're holding it in our hands. Next, we have r. Now, r represents the distance between the two masses. So in this case, we have the Earth as the first mass, and this one kilogram mass as the second mass, and so r is simply the distance between them. In other words, the radius of the Earth. And lastly, we have f. And realize that f is the force of gravity, that attractive force acting between these two masses. And this is called the weight. So we can't put the Earth on a scale, so instead we'll put this smaller mass on the scale. So we can measure the weight, the force of the Earth on the small mass, and then that can help us to determine the mass of the Earth. The first thing we need to do is we need to solve the universal gravitation. We need to solve it for the mass. So we'll start off with F equals GMM over R squared. And now we just want to get m by itself. We want to isolate m. And the way we do that is by multiplying both sides by r squared over gm. So you can see if we do this, the g's cancel out, the m's cancel out, and the r squareds cancel out, leaving us with simply m on the right side. From this, we see that m is equal to f r squared over gm. So now we just have to plug our measurements of those quantities into this equation, and then we will know what m is equal to, the mass of the Earth. So we have to plug into this formula. We're going to use little m as being one kilogram. That's the standard kilogram mass that, we'll, that we're going to hang from a scale. For r, that will be the radius of the Earth, which is known as being 6.37 times 10 to the sixth meters, or about 6 million meters. That's the distance from the surface of the Earth to the center of the Earth. And F is the weight of that mass, and the weight of a one kilogram mass, remember weight is just mg, so F is going to be equal to 9.8 newtons. And then lastly, we need to know what g is. And unfortunately, we have no idea what g is, because we never learned what g is yet. So in order to calculate the mass of the Earth, we must first measure g. So we're going to have to perform an experiment that will tell us g. Now remember where g came from. So in our derivation of the universal gravitation, g was that leftover constant stuff. So now we're going to need to figure out what that constant stuff is. So we'll go back to the universal gravitation. But this time, instead of solving for m, we'll instead solve for g. Because that's what we want to find. We want to create an experiment that will measure the gravitational constant. We need to multiply both sides by r squared over mm 
If we do that, the m's cancel and the r squared cancels, leaving us with g is equal to f r squared over mm. So we need to do an experiment and we need to measure those quantities on the right hand side, f r squared over mm, and if we can measure those quantities, then we'll know what g is. In other words, to find g, we need to measure the force acting between two masses. So let's consider two masses. In this equation, the capital M will be this big mass on the left-hand side. The lowercase m is the smaller mass on the right-hand side. R will simply be the distance between these two masses. Notice we always measure the distance from the center of each object. And so F is simply the force acting between these two objects. So this first arrow represents the force of the big mass on the little mass, which the big mass pulls the little mass to the left. But remember, according to Newton's third law, if one object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts a force on the first object of equal magnitude in the opposite direction. Forces always come in pairs. This is the force that we need to measure. So let's pick some quantities for this experiment. Let's say that we can use, for the large mass, we'll use 300 kilograms. We need to make this a pretty large mass because otherwise we won't be able to detect the force. It'll be too difficult to detect the force since gravity is so exceptionally weak. For the little mass, let's just keep it simple. We'll pick one kilogram. And the distance between these two objects, let's pick 20 centimeters. And so now we have to design an experiment that will measure the force acting between these two objects. Realize that these masses are still extremely small. This force is going to be very, 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 very small. It's going to be extremely difficult to measure this force. We don't notice the force of gravity on everyday sized objects. We only notice the force of gravity from extremely large objects like planets. So this force is going to be extremely difficult to measure. And we're going to have to get very creative with the experiment that will allow us to measure this force. The person that physicists give credit to measuring G was Henry Cavendish. And this is the experiment that he created. Notice we have our big mass and our little mass. We're going to bring them close together and they're going to gravitationally attract one another. The trick is to measure this force is not to try to measure the force directly, but instead is to measure the angle that this light beam is deflected. So the idea is to hang the small masses, which are going to be gravitationally attracted. It's going to cause a twist. And when the twist occurs, this mirror is going to end up getting turned. It's going to get slanted. And then now this beam that comes in is not going to just bounce straight back. It's actually going to be deflected off to an angle. So what we need to do is measure that angle. And if we measure that angle, we can use a little bit of rotational mechanics to figure out the force. Now the actual calculation from the angle to the force is beyond the scope of this lesson. But just realize that this angle that the beam has been deflected is proportional to the force that's acting between these two masses. So here are the experimental values. Remember the big mass was 300, the little mass was 1. The distance between the masses is 20 centimeters, or I've written it out here in using meters, 2 times 10 to negative 1 meters. And now we've measured the force from the angle. And the calculation of the force was 5 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons. So that was the force calculation we get by measuring this angle. So now we just have to take these quantities and plug them into the universal gravitation equation, and then we'll have g. So for the force, we're going to plug in 5 times 10 to negative 7. The radius is squared, which means we need to mul multiply by itself. So we write it twice, 2 times 10 to negative 1. The first mass was 300, and the second mass was 1. And now we got it. This is what g is. Notice everything is known. We just have to do this math, and we'll have g. So let's do the numbers first. So on top, we've got 5 times 2 times 2. That gives us 20. And on the bottom, let's just look at the numbers. We've got 3 times 1, so that gives us 3. And now we'll count up the tens, or the zeros. On the top, we have negative 7 and negative 1 
and negative 1, which all together gives us 10 to the negative 9. On the bottom, we have two zeros, which means that's 100, so that's 10 to the second power. Now we just have to do this math. So 20 divided by 3, that's 6.67, approximately, rounded off, times 10 to the, and for dividing powers of 10, we have to subtract the exponents, so that's negative 9 subtract 2, which gives us negative 11. And so this is the value of g, it's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Now let's just look at what the units are. So the units are going to be units of force times units of distance squared divided by units of mass squared. We put that together, that's going to be Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. And this is the value of g, the universal gravitational constant. Now that we have g, we can go back to find the mass of the Earth. This is the equation we had. Remember we used m was 1 kilogram, the weight was 9.8 newtons, here's the radius of the Earth, and the universal gravitational constant which we just found. We just need to plug these values in and then we can calculate the mass of the Earth. On top we'll have f as being 9.8, r squared is 6.37 times 10 to the 6 squared, divided by gm, we put 6.67 times 10 to the 11 times 1. We're going to use what's called an order of magnitude estimation since these are very complicated decimal values and we don't have a calculator. When you do an order of magnitude estimation, you just round off all the numbers to one significant digit. The 9.8, we'll consider that a 10. 6.37 will become a 6. And the 6.67 will become a 7. So if we do the order of magnitude estimation, we'll just have 6 times 6 for the top because 9.8, we'll just add that as one of the powers of 10. On the bottom, we'll just have 7. So adding up the powers of 10 on top, we'll have one power of 10 from the 9.8, we have 6, and another 6. All together, that gives us 13. And for the bottom, we just have negative 11. If we continue approximating, we realize that we can say that 6 is approximately equal to 7, which means they will cancel out, and we'll just get approximately 6. For the power of 10, again we have to subtract because these powers of 10 are being divided, and we have 13 subtract negative 11, which gives us 24. This is a mass and the unit will be kilograms. And there we have it, the mass of the planet Earth. 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. Now how cool is that? We were able to find out the mass of the Earth by using Newton's law of universal gravitation. This is one of the coolest things, in my opinion, that the human mind has been able to achieve, that we were able to measure the mass of the Earth, that we weighed the Earth without even putting the Earth on a scale. We were able, using the power of, of the human mind, to determine the mass of the Earth. How cool is that? Have a great day, you guys. This has been Fizzer number 10, and this is Mr. Keppel, and I'll see you in class.